Hello, Nick. Hello, just trying to connect my AirPods. Uh, you know what? I think everybody, are you? Can you hear us? I can hear you, but can you hear me? You're not muted. Yeah, it's just okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? No, it's not on mute. Hmm. Nick, maybe you're on mute. No. Hi, Rita. Hi. Oh, it's too low. Maybe the volume. Is there a way to? Is there a remote control? Yeah. What are you? Are you trying to? I just tested the speaker. No, That's what we heard. Her. The volume is what we need to. Increase. Is there a volume? Can you hear Rita? No. Hello. Can you hear me, Rita? I I can hear you. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I guess they can't hear us. Because we're trying oh. to hear her. Audio settings Hi. at the bottom of that screen. Hey Nick, what's going on? <laughs> we can have our own conversation. Hang on. I know. <laughs> no, volume on the microphone. Okay, let's see the volume on the speaker. This is the first. Try to say something else again. Yeah. Yeah. Say something can else. Speak? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? No. No. Hmm. You just put these up. I don't know if these are the first go of it, I see. What's this on the right, the far right? That's our microphone, but what, what about two to the right is the... Yeah, that one. All right, let me see this. Hang on. That's up all the way. How about... Um, what do you think? Uh, Rita and Nick can hear each other, but we can't... Can we see we're getting this? Rita, how about yours? How's the volume on your, your button? It's... And, and Nick, it's fine. Yeah, his volume hey, can you is fine. Hear us? I can hear you. He yes. can yeah. hear us, but we can't hear him. Yeah, we can. Can, you, can we hear Rita? Okay, so yeah, Christina, so we can't hear. I got over there. See, I got over here. Look at this. So I'm going to test the speaker. Okay. Yes. We're not getting any. Yeah. Let's try another. Want to try that? But I think that's us speaker, not them. Yeah, okay, hang on. Well, then select a speaker, same as microphone, Sony. The test speaker and system, Sony test and speaker. Switch to a phone audio. Audio settings. Sir, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so they can hear us clearly, uh, and they they can barely. Oh, you know what? Just, Maybe we should say something. Sure. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. can hear us. Uh, now, Rita. Hello. Hello. Rita? Can you hear? Wait. No. Yeah. No. No. Can you hear us? It's okay. okay. We can do sign language. <laughs> Just kidding. You can write in the chat. Can't hear that. Well, so that's our microphone. They can hear us. So be the speakers. So as a speaker. Okay. And, and we did a test, and it said switch to another. 
So still kind of pairs them. Does your chat work, Rita? Mine says it's disabled. Yeah, it's disabled. So I'm going to say maybe we can just text you our questions and comments. Yeah. Wait, Chris? I'm, I'm texting Christina. Oh, oh text me. Hey, unclick that. Okay, now go to the carrot. Yeah. Okay. Right. Wasn't Tom uh, Schulte going to join us? Yeah. Go there and see where it says test speaker and microphone. One more time. Tom was supposed to join because okay. he's the one who told me now yesterday about this call today. No trial oh, yeah. The email was sent to my Ukrainian government email, and I don't have access to this. Is this the first meeting? Uh, they just put this to me. Do you need to talk? I would have been a no show because I didn't know about this. Can you keep thinking here? Now, can you speak now for a sec? Can you hear us right now? Yes. You're perfect. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you, can you Louder, hear me? Nick. <laughs> Louder. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? See, my yes. microphone shows that I'm that I'm talking, so. Okay. So, okay. Can, can you guys you hear, hear Nick? Yes. Yes, now we're normal. Let's just have a few conditions. Sure. You, know, you may not want to hear us, but. <laughs> my input level is at maximum. And I want to let you know that I my camera's here, but my work's here. So if I turn to the side, I'm not ignoring. I'm just like writing notes and doing things, so. Same, same. Okay. So maybe okay. you're helping me with the microphone. Yeah. And then it's the Sony TV. Okay. okay. I'm sorry as an interested citizen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you did a great job. Uh, <laughs> we're glad. Tiger joined and he dropped off again. Are you guys speaking? No, no not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> So let's start the meeting. Um, they, they just put a seat in here. So I guess we're honored. Mm -hmm. We're the first ones to use it. Tiger, you may start whenever you're ready. Did everybody get the uh, the sheet? I guess the the Excel capital sheet from last from fiscal twenty four. Yes. That was the uh, first go. Um, so we've never really done a review of capital projects in the past. So I'll walk you through kind of, you know, you have a copy, right? Mm -hmm. Janet, you got a copy? Yeah. Bob, you got a copy? I didn't So, in essence, this is uh, this was our our capital uh, received, I guess, for just what are we what are we looking at right now? I'm sorry. We sent you uh, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Okay. okay. So no, that no. the file that you sent yesterday, I don't, I don't know if Nick has that because he doesn't have access to his. So Tom Tom Schultz sent me. The only file I have is the Excel called DPW Capital Projects Fiscal 24. Is that it? Is that the right one? He's explaining what it was the Capital Projects 24. Yeah, DPW Capital Projects FY24 as of 2624. Is that it? That's it. what I have. Yeah, that's the Can you guys talk a little bit louder in that room? Because I'm barely hearing you. Sure. Can you hear now? Yeah. I'll, I'll do my best to project my voice. I've never had that problem before. <laughs> yeah. uh, so in essence, what this is is on a. Uh, you'll see the. You'll see. It doesn't really matter the fund or the organization. That's the the org is basically which which uh, DPW department it sits in. This is from our Munis system. So 
uh, for an example, 4303 is the highway department. 3601 is the, basically the fund that comes out of as a bond fund. 4303 is the highway department. 4301 is the uh, administration and engineering. So anything in the four threes is a uh, is DPW. Got it. Through each one. So, um, or if you have questions. So, in essence, um, in essence, if you look down at the bottom, I'll talk you through it. We received forty two million three hundred sixty three thousand six hundred twenty seven dollars was our revised budget. Uh, the LTD stands for life to date. So our life to date revised budget is for just over forty two million. Our life to date actual is we spent on that about three point five million, three million four hundred fifty eight thousand nine sixty one seventy six. We have encumbered, meaning that there there's purchase orders out there. Um, so in essence, a promise to pay. There's a contract or or um, um, what have you for that for twenty seven million seven ninety eight eight forty seven eighty seven, which leaves a remaining balance. Of eleven million one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars and thirty seven cents for basically the remainder of the year or the remaining life of that project. The reason can I ask, I can I ask a question before you go on though, Tiger? I'm sorry. Um, is this what's the time frame? Is this just over the past year or like January, July one? So from July, okay, got it. Right, like so, fiscal year twenty one. The numbers drop in July one. In essence, you know, uh, bonded sometime comes in around June one, but uh, since that time, so yeah. and, and you know, and then the reason I say for the life of date of that project, if you look, the police department has a remaining budget at three million eighty seven thousand four fifty ninety eight, which is not allocated at present, but will in essence that's for soft costs and for future items that'll come in, so that'll come into play over the next. 12 months, right? Because we're looking to get into the police department, hopefully by the end of this year, right? Meaning calendar year 24, which would bring us into the next fiscal year. Got it. Right? Um, and then same exact thing. We have a $2 million, $2,056,777 for Dunham Stadium. That's like the sixth line down. And that's for the press box and um, the associated work there as well. And that is, we're waiting on bringing contracts to the board of select. So, and that's looking for a June build, you know? So, um, so that's why some of the, you look at the 11 million, it's actually a couple of large pockets and then some smaller numbers. Um, but to give you an idea of, you know, where we are, the, the highway department is right now, we're working on purchasing our, our dump sander, our boom mower and our our uh, leaf collection system. So 220,000 for the for the dump sander, 150,000 for the boom mower and $75,000 for the leaf collection system. The uh, leaf collection system should go to the board of selectmen in the next the next uh, cycle. The uh, the truck itself, we're trying to, right now 220 will not buy us a big truck. We have a smaller truck coming. We're gonna test that truck and then hopefully buy that because if we have to, by a larger vehicle, we're adding another sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars to that ask, which is actually reflected in our fiscal twenty-five budget. Uh, but we're trying to utilize a smaller truck in town um, that has the same power and safety capability, but a, but a better turning radius. So we're in essence in that, analyzing what we're doing for uh, the purchases to make sure that we're going to buy the right piece of equipment um, and spend the money wisely. But right now, anything that we buy, we won't see for ten months. Uh, is the way that the way it's looking. So I don't know if you have any questions on any of the items that are that are here. I can walk you through each one if you got a question. But in essence, we're only six months into the season. Some of the stuff is for a spring build. Some of the stuff we jumped on right away, and uh, other things are are um, are waiting. Like the, the up uh, five up from the bottom, the fiscal year twenty four train station. We had one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That was to paint the station. We were able to paint the gantry for $10,000 um, during the shutdown. And then the DOT, even though we had a contract for the rest of the painting, the DOT delayed us and said we couldn't paint the, the, the train station. So we have a contract outstanding waiting uh, before, and we haven't, we haven't uh, put it into a purchase order yet, but for that remaining dollars. And once the DOT tells us that we have a green light and a time frame to paint the station, then that money will disappear. But we, you know, in essence, we wanted to be done with that uh, this past summer, and the DOT 
uh, because of the construction that they had going on on the rail line and all the work that they were doing at the station and utilizing the station for a bus depot, we couldn't get into we couldn't um, get into uh, to, to paint the station. So some things got some things got pushed a little bit, but they're all in play, so to speak. But I, like I said, I don't know if you have any questions overall on any of the twenty four ask and, and where we are status wise. There was one. I didn't see the playground for Waveney. I know that's going to be a private public, but is there? It was last year, so it wasn't this year's budget. It was a previous year's budget. So it's fiscal twenty three, not fiscal twenty four. It was four hundred fifty five thousand dollars. And where are we with that? We are. Uh, we have a committee um, with that. So we have uh, Monica Capella, um, Lauren Nussbaum, Hillary Kahn. <laughs> And a couple of others, and then some members of the Park and Rec Commission, Francesca, and then members of the Parks Department. Uh, Ryan Restivo has been running it. And we have a design for uh, the playground itself and the fitness facility. They would like to see the playground a little bit more expansive, so they want to raise money. So they're looking at this grant season and uh, this fundraising season coming up from July onward. I guess the grant season's in, say, eight, October, November. And the last time Monica ran a project with us, which was the Mead Park Playground, she was successful in getting us a good amount of grant money from the Community Foundation and others. And they want to see to go through that cycle. So we're looking at dividing the project at present up into two phases, do the athletic area first, and then the playground second. Shouldn't cost us any more money, but that's, that's the plan right now is to make sure that we can... Uh, Put together the project that everyone wants to see um, with the donor dollars that we know will be coming available. So we, we don't want to we don't want to short ourselves. So that's that's the reason for the delay. We we put together a committee. The committee's been working for months now trying to put together this plan and put together this schedule. So that's where that stands. But that right, was no, thank no, thanks for the update. I, I guess I'm just curious. Are there any other projects like that that we had approved but haven't been able to quite get off the ground for whatever reason? Not necessarily, no. The majority of the ones that that, uh, that we wanted to launch last year have been launched um, overall. You know, we have we have still some things that we're, we're uh, you know, that are still in play, but nothing that, nothing that, nothing that failed to launch that I, that I remember offhand. Yeah, like, and I don't, I'm not meaning like fail, like I don't, like, no, I'm not no, suggesting no. it was a failure, just trying to understand like, you know, what, what we were able to do what and then you know what what is still left to do because that just it it's just one more thing right that we have to do maybe this year that goes on that list well, i guess but one thing though to just related to that which i think is a very good point Rita, which is you know there's any number of things that we approve you know funds are allocated in a budget and for a variety of reasons you can't get it off the ground or the you know mta's involved or whatever you can't get in there and, you know, look, the, the money there, it's been allocated. We'll, we're happy to pay for it because it's been approved. But, but the one, I think, missing piece, and maybe it makes some sense, Tiger, and you can probably figure out the most efficient way to run down this list, is that some of these items, when they're approved, right, they're based on your best guesstimate, based on your decades of experience of, look, this feels like a $100,000 project. We might even have had some relatively recent indicative bids of something very similar that would suggest $100,000 makes sense. On the other hand, there's certain other projects for which, like you said, the, the painting of the railroad station, you have a contract, right? It's a fixed price contract. When you say go, we know exactly what it's going to put. So for some of these items where we don't actually, you know, we haven't put in a purchase order or we don't have a contract, it's theoretically possible that when the opportunity opens up and you and your best judgment say, all right, good, let's go. You know what? That dumpster isn't 200 grand anymore. It's 280, you know, and then we got to figure out what that delta is. And so I don't know whether or not it might make some sense to highlight, you know, and you can skip the stuff that's not material, but you know, some of these things where, you know, you got to get in a queue. It takes eight months for these things to be delivered. You know, the, the typical thing that, you know, you brought our, understanding and education up the learning curve over the years, Tiger. But if you can maybe highlight some of those things for us, because those are the ones where we need to kind of think to Rita's point, well, all right, so what, what's our exposure here when we do say we're going to finish painting or, or pull the trigger on that truck? Yeah, at, at, well, thank you, Tom. At, at present, the only ones that we're seeing 
push on are the majority of the equipment ones, right? Yeah. Um, that's why I mentioned the highway department with with the uh, with the with the dump truck with the dump truck, whereby our standard say freight liner, the large vehicle that we have, um, we're downsizing because this two twenty number will not make it. It just won't make it now. Yeah. You know? So we're looking at okay, do we need that side vehicle inside the downtown area? We just bought one. We want to test that out, and make sure that it's going to work for us. And if it does, we have we have the capacity to use two. So that would be that possibility to use that that money to buy this the smaller vehicle, so that we don't have to come back for more money. But in our fiscal twenty five budget, that number has jumped to make it so that now you know what is the true what is the true number out there. We're seeing the same problem, the same push with the boom mower, and a little bit on the uh, the leaf collection system. Leaf collection systems now are about. 85,000, not 75,000. So exact same thing. You know, we come in, we're six months to 18 months prior to, you know, the, the finalization of a project, right? Because we come in in December, November with a number, we get it approved in April, May, we get the money in July, and then we have 12 months, right? So it's anywhere from six months to 18 months out that we're trying to project, you know? Yeah. Uh, but those are the ones... The equipment ones are the most difficult. Uh, the other ones we're, 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 we're uh, seeing for at present, okay, but you'll see in our fiscal 25 capital ads that there's a that there's a jump. Like I've got a jump in paving. I've got a jump in sidewalks because the numbers that we're seeing coming that now, you know, construction always lags a little bit off of everything. So those right. numbers are actually coming to the point where um, – what we what we used to be able to say we used to be able to uh, do a mile of sidewalk for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We can't do that anymore. So that, that yeah. number's not, it's about three and a quarter now, three fifty, right? Um, right. And paving, uh, you know, we had kept paving old. We had held paving at two and a half million for twenty years. I can't hold anymore. Now I'm at three, three and a half, based upon like five year average. I'm at about three and a half a year. Uh, things like that. That we just that, that that we know you know then we reflected those in 25 24 was a little bit of a growing year where we're getting caught a little bit of it but i don't see yeah. off of here i don't see anything you know you you were there you saw the sweeper it shows 200 200 but it really wasn't 200 you know that was that was more than that you know we had a bit yeah. more um you guys getting the board of finance gave us some additional monies for that that's the exact same thing it's not reflected in here it's actually a 220 project versus 200 you know things of that nature where yeah. we're getting a little bit of where we're seeing a little bit of push you know i mean i i would say i would say this tiger which you know for, for what it's worth when, when you get in front of the larger boards and we'll probably flush this out when we do the preview of the operating budget on friday but i i don't think it's unfair to to you know speak to and make sure that the larger audience of the full town council and the full board of finance understands that inflation is a thing and it affects every organization and in some respects your departments you know you're out there buying raw materials you're buying asphalt you're buying whatever you're buying you know we i think we do need to properly contextualize this budget in this season to understand Exactly. What are you looking at? You know, you're getting these bids in or you're getting these, you know, supply contracts or they're coming in and saying, well, you know, buy a cubic yard or whatever it is, however you buy this stuff, it's going to be more than you're going to like, well, I've never paid that much. Yeah. I've never had to pay that high. Right. And so and so that that actually helps us understand what you're facing, what your challenges are and and how we can put that into the larger context of, you know, we have all the departments coming to us and they're all going to want to have three, four, five percent growth or whatever it is. And and where do we feel you know we need to kind of you know call balls and strikes etc. So um, I just think that makes some good sense. And can I build on uh, that because I think it's about I agree it's about managing expectations so yeah. it's not a surprise later but it's also like if there are, if there are other projects that are coming in from earlier years that haven't gone, gotten off the ground for good reasons. Yeah. Um, your list of what the stuff that you're trying to accomplish this year grows and the ability to do it all. Right is also, I mean, we're we're going to be doing more things than we think. You know, that's on that's on like the the FY twenty twenty four list. So I think it's just having visibility into um like all the stuff that we're doing. You know, partly to to give visibility. Like Tiger, you're doing a lot of stuff, and um just uh, having us understand the 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 bigger picture. 
No, I appreciate that. The uh, we are, I you know, I think, I think the town looks great. You know, overall, the uh, yeah. you know, one of the uh, one of the hallmarks this this year was the fact that we in essence completed our twenty year cycle of paving, which was fantastic. So every road has been done except for Pine Street, which will be done next year. And the only reason Pine got delayed is because we had gas on it. And um, next year will be a uh, an entire streetscape, new granite curb, new brick sidewalks, new roadway, that kind of thing. It's being uh, the design is being finalized right now. Um, but yeah, the um, so that was our biggest milestone was that this year we kind of we had touched everybody. Some roads we had touched twice. Some roads we had touched three times, depending upon if we had crack sealed it, paved it, crack sealed it again. Others we hadn't touched at all, and that was the that was the culmination this year. You know, we did a lot of paving this year um and uh, that's a good thing you know but the uh, you know we i we constantly look at our bandwidth you know so because we only have a certain amount of bandwidth but within within what we're what we're asking for this year what we've asked for last year you know i'm comfortable because the majority of the what we asked for last year is already in play meaning it's already be you know it's it's underway and by the time we start the next one in six months or more we'll uh, be clearing out the rest of them the police department is putting a little bit of a, a hold on the department. I have one, I, I, in essence, I have one of my engineers dedicated full time to the police department, right? Which is, that's a, that's a, that's a difficult thing to have, Huge. you know, but, uh, but other than that, you know, and that'll be for the next year. And then at that point in time, they'll be freed back up again. Um, but that's, that's the only right now that's, that's the, one of the stresses that we see. Well, to one of Tom's questions, sure. um, in terms of being able to put all the puzzle pieces together when a project is is approved, as we have in the list, is that many of the projects, the big projects, get approved with a budget without the project being designed first, without it being a firm number or a semi-firm number where we have the estimators opining as to what the real cost will be. And we run into problems like we did with the Playhouse or with Wavening House. And I think that for large scale projects, we need to look at it more holistically and get more confirmation on the project, not just the way it looks and functions, but also what it ultimately will cost, taking away the fact that there may, some, some, there may be some inflationary triggers in that. But I think that with Wavening House um, is an example of a project that keeps on growing, or even the Playhouse. Um, how, do we, how do we deal with it? Do we go back to the system that we had way back where we approved the design portion and then execute an estimate and then move forward and approve it? Um, we're putting, we're, we're making it inside out rather than the way it should be. Well, the Playhouse, is good. It's a different animal because it was one type of project and then another. Is the scope completely changed? It has nothing to do with change or nothing to do with the money. It has to do with the scope completely changed when we went to a different type of vendor with Cinema Lab and a completely different. We were looking at going in there, slapping some paint on the walls, making the bathrooms ADA compliant, putting bow tie back into the theater, and calling it a day. Now we have someone who wants to utilize the entire theater all in one shot. Um, the you know, and then use it for different purposes, you know, our um, you know, members area or event space, things of that nature. That project is completely different. And then when when once those parameters came in, that drove a lot of code requirement costs. And we did have uh, an estimate for, prepared for the first portion and then for the second portion. Waving House, the exact same thing. We had an estimate prepared for the first portion and the second portion of the Waving House. Thankfully, we have a contractor who's been willing to hold his price, but his price was the exact same. Like, it's true. He held his price. He's been holding his prices before COVID. So, the, you know, the, uh, it's just the, the situation that we're in. We're not we're, where we can, you know, where we don't have hard data, we have someone come in and do a cost estimate prior to what we give you for a number. You know, but the, the, those are, it's a difficult situation that the Playhouse, unfortunately, is just a different animal um, because we had two different types of scope of work. And it's, the scopes are completely separate. You know, we're, we're doing a complete renovation of that building. We tore the thing down for the studs. We weren't planning on tearing it down for the studs. We increased the second floor. We put a third floor on it for the HVAC. 
none of that was envisioned in the first view of what we were going to plan to be. Uh, you know, so the uh, and at that point, it's, and that building is so tough too because you didn't know until you got into it. And asking the contractor and the engineer, and, and uh, you know, we had Ian look at it as well. All three of them said that the best method was what we did, was basically go in, open it up, and see what it's like, and then say how much the cost is going to be versus sitting there designing a cost and then coming forward and finding out all the problems that we would once we opened up the walls. Because then we would have been in a situation where we're stopping work. And then once you get to a stasis point, we're in trouble because it's a lot of delay claims at that point in time. And then the numbers just continue to grow from there. So you would have been, we would have been, and then there, according to the each of the, all three of them I asked separately, se several times, the project likely would have cost us more money had we done it that way than the way we the, the method we performed. I'm not a big fan of design build, to be perfectly honest with you, but in, in this situation, it probably was the best method that we could perform. I'd much rather have it all dialed in and be done and, you know, you know, I'm enjoying the guaranteed maximum price return, but you, you pay for that service as well, right? But I am enjoying that aspect of having Kerner working on the police department and the rest of it. And in areas where we can utilize them again, we will. We're utilizing it well on uh, uh, Dunning Stadium for the exact same reason, because they've done such a good job at the, at the, at the library and the police department. I asked them to help us with Dunning because it's a multi-phase, multi-year yeah. project with various aspects going on yeah. press box bathrooms concession stand outside work you know all that so there's a lot of coordination that you know i just frankly don't have the staff to do it's not that we don't have the expertise to do it it's not the staff to do it uh, at present so I, you know the uh i think we're i think we're still good as far as our numbers and our method but you know we could certainly always look to tweak it further and, and see what, you know I, I don't envision too many more of these to be perfectly honest with you we're pretty much done with the buildings after we get done with this one, the police department and the theater, we don't have too many things we left. We still have Irwin Park, so we have Irwin, there, and we have other Irwin is, or yeah, Irwin, right now we just have monies in there just to basically work maintain. on the outside of the building, maintain it. Should we get to the point where we decide to then, I don't know, make offices in there or something, that'll be a whole different design. At that point, we can figure out, yeah, maybe that's a time when we hire a construction manager and have them come in based on the size, but I don't really know. We haven't decided what we want to do with that building. Right? That's the problem is we don't, we have the people in there, but <clears throat> and it's nice swing space for us. It's like been a good thing for us, you know, but we don't have an overall use for it per se, you know, at present. Um, you know, and then the uh, the only other large one we have out there now is the HVAC at Waveney. And we have it, we've had that designed and estimated present. That's where that's the number that's in your that's in fiscal twenty five. That's a very large number, unfortunately, but it's a very large building and everything is inside the walls. Where are we with Wavening House and the ADA? That's pretty much that's that's wrapping itself up. Um, we're for the bathrooms are pretty much complete. Uh, we got a couple of things we have to do in there. Um, very minor, mostly punchless work, and then we've. Uh, we designed the elevator and designed the shaft, and now it's going more into the shop drawing phase of it to make sure it fits. We were down to literally inches to make sure it fit inside the uh, the area without touching the banister, without touching the paneling, without touching anything that's there, so we could fit in that area. So we were down to literally inches on either side. We now we're just at the point where we go back to the elevator company. To uh, provide shop drawings. Once they provide us the shop drawings, we can release the shop drawings and we're looking at this coming December building it because we didn't want to be in this problem with the, with uh, whereby we're trying to put weddings in there or what have you. Uh, uh, during this portion of the time, we want to be able to then close the building, so to speak, in December, you know, keep it open for certain events, but close it, so to speak, from December to February. Which is the downtime, anyways, and then put the elevator in at that point. Is the elevator going to require any work on the stairwells to narrow it to allow more a wider shaft area for the elevator? At present, no, we're trying to fit it right. It's the banister doesn't move at all. You know, the uh, the upper banister gets removed, but that was always right. part of the plan. Right. And the banister itself, the, and the paneling, because there's paneling if you walk right. down that way. The paneling, the paneling doesn't get touched, so everything fits inside that that, that footprint. Um, 
And like I said, we, we went back and forth with the designer. We hired a, we hired a, an elevator consultant, a specific elevator consultant for it as well, to help us um, with the design also. And, you know, because I didn't want to touch the fans, I didn't want to touch anything. And we're, we're inside that footprint now, which is a good thing. And what about the DOJ? The DOJ, we have a uh, paperwork on my desk from the DOJ after we deal with the attorney. At that point in time, we'll go back and, and uh, finalize the settlement. Um, should we expect an additional cost? From, well, there's money in the budget already to take care of some of the aspects that they've been talking about. Um, and then once we finalize it, um, we'll have to work through those those areas. But at, at, at Waveney House at present, I, I don't believe that there's anything else that's done. Exterior, not interior. Exterior, there's, there's work that has to be done. Mainly parking lot. The, the western parking lot is not compliant because the grades don't make it. So the accessible route is not good. The, the sidewalk itself has some issues with it as far as uh, compliance, things of that nature. But the inside of the building, apart from wayfinding signage, which we've never had in the building, right. to be honest with you, uh, it, and that's a that's a philosophical discussion because more signage on a building starts to you know to detract from the, the beauty of the building. So apart from wayfinding signage, there's not a, there's not much else that needs to be done in the building from a compliance standpoint. The doors. Um, the doors are fine. We haven't put all the doors replaced. The the only thing we have are the um, the thresholds were uh, not compliant. That you know you know they're off by a very nominal amount, unfortunately, but they're they're they date back to the original building, which makes it very difficult. So basically, we shouldn't be expecting any additional charges for the DOJ ADA issues. At Waveney House, I think we'll like I said, I, they 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 I can't speak about the whole thing, but they they did talk about certain things that were in the building. We're tackling all the things that they talked about primarily. There were a couple of other things that were smaller in nature, like the thresholds, things of that nature, wayfinding signage. But as far as the larger aspects, we already had those in play. Even the railings on the ramps? Or or even the railings on the ramps. We have to, yeah, there's, like I said, there's there's a, there's certain things that have to be done. You know, those are in play at present. So the railings are already in play. So, t t Tiger, quick quick yeah. question for you, which is, so of all these um, items, well, let's call them compliance items. Yeah. You know, it, you know, we we're going to have the HVAC in the years down the road. We have the elevator. We know about that. But for all these compliance items, could you just break down for us at a high level, which one of those have already been budgeted for, and which ones are in the five hundred or whatever that you have here on your spreadsheet for this coming fiscal year. So the, uh, words, are, are all the compliance items already covered and none of them are in the 500 or there's there's a handful that are in this 500 and but once they're approved then we have enough money to address all the things that we were made aware of that's just, i'm just trying to get a sense there so the, the what we discussed with them was not just waving the house it was it was basically the entire campus waving and then the yeah yeah I, I recall yeah and then depending upon how um, the settlement finishes will will definitely drive that number north or south at that point in time, um, depending on what they were what they were requesting or what they request. And then it's incumbent upon us to then, based upon the comments that they had, everything we do going forward to make sure that we're you know in compliance. So yep. we're taking a look at we're taking a look at. The grades of every single parking the same parking right. space and then the then the accessible route right so i've got a couple of parking lots in play right now for that exact reason right the, the accessible route isn't good so we're looking at the western parking lot of leaving we're looking at the paddle hut lot yep. and parking lot things of that nature which would then be in a future budget you know to then the, the okay. lot needs to be done anyways but when i go to do it then we come then we take care of the compliance issue but they would be two to three years out they would have to close within three years of the uh, settlement agreement because that would be part of. It. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and does does that does that dialogue does that occur only once you've commenced the work to fix some of the big items, or does that 
dialogue have to occur and be completed before you put your first shovel in the ground? Give, give us a sense of process of how so, you anticipate this process unfolding of doing the work and checking off these items and getting us to the point where everybody's comfortable, including the regulators, that we're all good. So so a lot of the low-hanging fruit we already took care of. Right. right. That part, that's kind of where I was getting and, and perhaps can be moved up a little bit in your discussion about these when you get in front of the larger board. Because, you know, they, they don't want you. They, they may not have the contacts that this subcommittee has. They may not have all that. And they may think that, oh, my, you know, there's a huge laundry list of everything and it's all open. And, in fact, it's not. It's something we're aware of. We've been working on it. There's a plan to move this forward. And it takes some time. And we might be a year or two out from final completion. You know, just tr I'm just trying to, you know, keep that thread in a digestible soundbite, right? And if there's some way you can kind of think about how you might describe that. I know that. I'll put some thoughts together because it's I'm also bound a little bit by the fact that right now we're, you know, we're in sediment phase, right? So I can't speak about everything. I can only stay in about a 30,000 foot view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get it. But the, uh, the, the low hanging fruit we took care of immediately or yes. get into play uh, immediately. Uh, and then there were larger items that we were having discussions on either how to handle it, uh, how to mitigate it, you know, things yeah. of that nature. And then that will then drive the final cost as to what that might might entail, right? Um, as far as how do you mitigate this situation? How do you, you know, um, how do we mitigate the fact that we have a disparity between the town hall and buying cottage, right? We have a staircase, but I don't have a, I don't have a ramp, right? So how do we, so we've been talking to them about that. We have a design underway and uh, that design needs to be approved by the, we want that design approved by the DOJ before we go ahead and put a shovel on the ground, to make right. sure where you know that what we're what we're proposing will satisfy um, their needs or their requirements. So that and then based upon that that design, you know that design could at that point that we you know we have a rough order of magnitude on that design. But um, if they say, oh no, that's not going to work, or we want to see this enhancement or that enhancement, then obviously that will drive the the number further north. You know, so the uh, so I can't uh, I can only tell you that. Everything that we, you know, the monies that, we, that I have here to try to bring us into compliance from, from their perspective, and then things that they might not necessarily have reviewed while we're going around looking as well to make sure that we're compliant everywhere so we don't have another complaint. We make sure that we have monies available to take care of those as well. So if I know that they had an issue with like I said, a parking lot and the accessibility of a parking lot. I want to make sure that all of our parking lots are taken care of so we yeah. don't have issue going forward. So we're trying to have monies available to go do that as well, right? So we say, okay, you know, I have the same situation here with an accessible route at this location as I did that they pointed out at this location. Just because they didn't point it out at location Y, but they pointed out at location X doesn't mean I shouldn't do it at location Y. We need to have the monies to go ahead and do it at location Y, if you follow me on that. Yeah. The, uh, um, so that kind of, that, yeah, that, so that drives, and then this number from fiscal 24, we had 500 and fiscal 25, I've got the same fiscal 24, it kind of takes into account a lot of things that I already had in play. Fiscal 25 takes into account think further things that we'll have to do and then envisions other work that, that we might, might see. Go ahead. Rita. Yeah. So the one thing that I like, I think we kind of touched on it. This is, first of all, this is an awesome list, and uh, it sounds like there obviously a lot of thought that got, you know, put into putting this in the list. But I'm also wondering, like, from, from that list from the past that we just talked about before, like, how much more is there, like, is there a, um, a, a change in the amount that we were expecting that we were going to have to pay to what we are now paying that could, could be like, how, how, do I, how do I approach this? We're looking at how much money we want to be able to spend on these capital projects, but we've already approved capital projects in the past that aren't like completed yet, and they may go up in cost. Yeah. Is there a way of capturing that? Like, so, you know, those capital projects, after looking at them, they, they're actually going to be costing a lot more than we expected or less, like whatever that net is, in addition to what we're looking at, you know, going forward. Is there a way to capture that? 
you see, you're, you're saying that the, the cost and delay is that what you're asking? Yeah, I mean, again, for whatever reason, it's not it for it could be for a lot of reasons, you know. Uh, well, um, so it could bad. be interest rate increase or whatever. It could be like uh, it's just higher cost of supplies and higher cost of labor and whatever. So we are our original, you know, we had our original um, projection, our original budget, right? Whatever that was, like the capital expenditure that we approved, plus or whatever ten percent. Um, as we go along, we're experiencing who knows surprises or things that change. Are are we capturing that total? Like how much more those projects are, are actually costing us? I think your LTD revised, isn't that the revised? If you but from if from you, prior <laughs> from prior from prior, not original original approved. No, I'm talking about like the we just talked about a couple of projects that started off in you know maybe F FY03 that aren't maybe completed yet. I'm just wondering if like those projects could have increased in terms of cost and are we capturing that? They would, well, they, they would have been captured and we'd, you know, they'd have to, we'd have to come back for more money, you know, um, you know, in that regard, because we'd be overrunning that budget. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I, I, I think yes, that's where yeah. I agree that the answer is they'd have to come back and ask if it was more right. money. Right. And, we, and, and we, then uh, every, every year, at least the Board of Finance, we get a list of all the open projects, right, that haven't been completed in the year right. in which they were approved and allocated, right. right? And we go down the list and we look and, and there's usually an explanation of something. Oh, yeah, well, you know, uh -huh. we ordered these things, but, you know, the, the regulators couldn't certify it, so we couldn't right. complete it, whatever, or there's some certificate wasn't issued. And so we look at it and and sometimes we close it out and then there's there's still money sloshing around in that project account and kind of all comes back into the general fund. If it if it were to require more money than was allocated, uh -huh. you know, Tiger and Diana and other, they're they're duty bound. They're gonna have to come back to us to get an approval to say, hey, look, you know, we needed eighteen thousand dollars more to complete this. And uh here's why we think we really should be doing this. And you know, oh, by the way, we had some savings over here. So net net, it's really pretty good. You know, that's the kind of conversation we have. Right. Having. Holistically. But, yeah. Like, what is that overall delta? And Because that's, I guess that's my, it's fine. Of course, you come back and you say we need more or, hey, you know, we, we under, you know, we underspent. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder whether holistic, or not, right? uh, Deanna, whether or not Anne could, could. Uh, there might be um, an account, you know, these. Um, I think there account, is some. The, the, there's probably a code associated with each project. I'm imagining in a system. So you could, you, yeah, so there's a project code. So you could sort yeah. based on project code and, but then you'd have to know, I guess, I'd have to ask Ann because she said yeah, yeah, The reason I'm saying Josh that run is this for the Board of Finance, and I we, we, I could either go back and look at the attachments for old meetings or ask one of them to come up with a current one. But there there, there is there, there is a list, and people keep track of it. And I know at least the Board of Finance we we look at it and consider it and debate it and you yeah. know probe and push back on why does it take four years to buy new oxygen canisters for the fire department or. Yourself. you know we, we do talk about that kind of stuff yeah i'm just saying there's not like an unlimited amount of money i, I guess what i'm saying is it's just do, do you understand why i'm asking this because we're we're looking at a year in right we're just looking at yeah. what we're proposing for fy 24 but are we also considering how much more maybe some other projects are going to be costing us so really what we're facing overall is is a bigger number than what we're planning for in fy 24 that's I, that's what i'm that's what i'm saying well, in essence, in essence, we haven't come back to ask for money very often. That's very yeah. limited. Yeah, let's be perfectly honest. So uh, we came recently only. As much as he loves seeing you, Rita, it's Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not a good look for Tiger to be coming <laughs> back to us. Yeah. And, I know he. I know he doesn't like to do that. Yeah. And, uh, I will say, I think I think there's always some straggling monies that do come back to the town. You know, there's. $5,200 in some account for something and we crawls it out and the money's coming so, back. So the feeling is that we're, we're pretty much like we're, we're breaking even on, in terms of that. And we're not like way right. underestimating and then having a face, like adding more money to the, to the bill. Let's just no, say. Actually do better than that. I think you give back, you know, we, we, what, what is asked for in the small times we got to come back. We usually come to that come to the board with saying, "Oh, I needed eighteen thousand dollars for this for this truck 
because they need to, you know the purchase price is not what we uh, what we had estimated it's a little bit a little bit higher but I had savings in this and I had savings in that and savings in that and that delta is actually I've got a lot more savings than I have in my requests we actually come forward with not only an ask but a gift and say okay here's here's things that that we you know that uh it might have been budgeted at seventy thousand, came in at sixty nine thousand. Well, there's six thousand dollars left. It goes back in to the general fund, and then we're asking for eighteen back. But I come with twenty four coming forward, saying I've got twenty four offset, but I need eighteen. We can't make the we as a department can't make the change. The board of finance can make that change. We can't allocate between um, project votes. You know, we have to ask for that approval. So we usually come with. Uh, That's what Josh goes through. Like okay. at, at, in the board of finance meetings, he has, a, he has a, a list for you, right, Tom? And you guys have to approve it. Right. There's, yeah. There, and there'll be a list coming forth soon of projects to close out for this yep. for this year. That that'll and then that'll be a overall savings to the town from the projects that were allocated. And then the, the board of finance can determine how they want to spend that going forward. Sometimes they reallocate to to new tax supported capital projects in the next year to offset, you know. And then yeah. go from there. But that where Josh is actually working on that, what we call uh, clean out, you know, cleaning up every year, um, a close out of those projects. So you, at that point in time, it'll it'll hit the uh, it'll hit the documents, and you can see it at that point for uh, you know what the savings is overall for all the projects that are being closed. If that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to know that you know what we saved offset what we may have gone over like yeah, holistically somewhere on the order of 1.5 million i think was was uh, returned uh when they, they when they cleaned it all back out again it was around one. yeah the last time we did this i remember it was not an insignificant number coming right. back so and they'll do it again this year and we'll go forward from there i mean i think that from a from a control standpoint you know i mean it's not addressing your how do we do versus budget kind of thing but from a control standpoint, you know, no capital project can go over what's been allocated yeah. without coming back. Like, right. But it, it's a fair point when we consider, hey, what's the ask this year? Yeah. Hey, what's the status and what's and so just from a timing or phasing point of view, that information perhaps could provide again some more helpful context to this year's ask. And also in terms of prioritization, you know. Like we may, and, and, like, and even if it's not perfectly up to date, but something that's just kind of directionally correct from the last time we did this, what did it look like and how's it going? Because I just, you know, just chatting with Tiger, I get a measure of comfort a little bit. So these numbers are all kind of coming out the way they have in prior years. And there's there's a bit coming back some years, a little bit more than than others. But it's a it's a very rare bird when you're coming to us and asking us, you know, for more money. And when you do, you you kind of get a reaction of the type of you know well playhouse <laughs> yeah well if, if i may to both rita's and tom's um, comments from the standpoint of town council we have been presented with situations whether it was the fields that went inadvertently over budget but we weren't told to the last minute and you know school's going to start and we have to pay it now or the kids are not going to be able to use the fields the same thing with the playhouse. We signed the lease not knowing the, the total scope that the building would be. The town council was told that we had gotten good price from Bailey and yeah. that it was basically within that number. So we approved 4.x in, in, as a budget for this building, not expecting the overruns of another two to $3 million to finish the project. And what we're trying to do is ascertain where can we have better controls to decide whether or not we want to go forward with a project rather than being held at the last minute with, you know, you have to pay up or else. It's, it's an awkward situation, but we, we should look at the way in which we are approving projects in order to better contain costs. But I mean, to be fair, I, I built a house and I renovated a house and I renovated an old house and it was very expensive. I wish I, you know, I didn't want to knock it down, but it would have been a lot cheaper to knock it down than to renovate it. And my stuff was last minute having to like, you know, a construction project by its very nature is, and you know this, you're an architect, you get into a project, you pull out a wall and you realize, oh my God. That's not what I thought was there. 
maybe structural beams weren't there. And, and then you're writing checks because you, or you say, I'm abandoning the, abandoning the project. And they're not decisions that can be planned for at the beginning of the project. As you would know, there are, um, there are circumstances in which are, they are unexpected and have to deal right. with. But this goes beyond that. It goes beyond that, that it's sort of like the contractor would do something, come back and give you a bill for something that you didn't even know happened. When the Playhouse was presented, it was not presented as a design build project, at least not to town council. It was presented as a, but, as a fixed cost, we had gotten a great price from the same builder that did Waveney, and we were going forward with that. It was a tough pill to swallow because it was a lot more money than we envisioned spending, and there was a consideration whether we should sell the building at that time or invest in the building. Now, I don't disagree that investing in the building is a good idea, but to have such a huge spread between the number and the project already on the way not seeing final drawings, not seeing what it's going to look like, signing a lease with the tenant and exposing us to additional expenditures. It was a series of unfortunate events that I think we ought to look at the process and see how we can better control. And I hope that the town is out of the business of design build because it's, it doesn't work unless you really have the professionals to do it. Well, well, and and I think part of that is just like managing expe expectations along the way. Because to your point, Diana, th these things do happen. And I think um, I know I'm, I remember talking to you, Tiger, and you had said that at one point you were giving monthly updates, and that you know the prior administration kind of kiboshed that. <laughs> and I think this new uh, administration, I'm sure, is very open to having those more regular updates, right, Diana? <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, it's a different style, completely okay. different style of management. Yeah. So, I mean, I think part of that is just, I, you know, there were some unexpected things. I think, um, I think maybe if, if people had been like hearing those stories along the way, sure. rather than like waiting a few months. And again, I don't, I, I think that's more of a management style any, than anything else. <laughs> um, that, that I think would be a lot more helpful in, in, in taking others along. Hey, Tiger, I have a couple of questions. Sure. So, um, I mean, Diana brought the example of her house, right? And we don't have a choice when we have our house renovations with going in and saying, hey, contractor, do an RFP and give me a fixed price. And if you go over, that's going to do. Um, to what extent do we have time and materials, um, contracts with contractors? And is there a way for the larger ones to have a fixed price whereby any overage is on that? So, we don't do time and material that often. We have a uh, we have one contractor that works on a time and material basis on our um, repairing basically driveway aprons, curbs, utility trenches, things of that nature. Because we 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 bid that out and then went with that process for a number of years and then determined that um, the value of paying him on a time and material basis because he's jumping from project to project to location. We'll say project to project. Location, 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 location. Um, that takes the guesswork out from him as far as travel, where he's going to go, and lost time and things of that nature. That's built into a unit price basis. So we went to a time material, and that actually has been cost effective for us. Um, on a much larger project, like the police department, we have a guaranteed maximum price, right? But there's a breaking point between whether or not you have the construction manager uh, perspective, you have the guaranteed maximum price, all of which come with a cost. As well, right? So we have a guaranteed maximum price in the police department. We have a set contingency on our side. Turner has a set contingency on their side. But at that point in time, Turner's sitting on this side of the table with us. He's not sitting on that side of the table. It's a completely different animal. But that's a twenty-seven million dollar project, right? So that's that's something that that you would look to go do that. Um, the other ones, the ones that we're talking about, when you get down to the level that we're at, uh, it gets much more difficult to or it's a little bit. Uh, the cost benefit analysis maybe isn't in play where you would have a construction manager to point out that, you know, for, uh, for Dunning, we do have Turner working for us. We're not asking for a guaranteed maximum price for them because for that there's additional money involved in that. Um, but they are working as our construction manager to help facilitate all the different trades and the different work that we have going on mainly to help us because we don't have the staffing to, to perform that. Not the, we have the expertise, we just don't have the staff. 
So it depends upon each contract as to how we want to uh, do each contract. The majority of our contracts are on a unit price basis, meaning we estimate out how much work there has to be. They, they give us a unit price for each portion of that work. And then at the end of it, we measure it all out and then, um, and then come up with the final number. So we've estimated out the number. We estimate out exactly how much tonnage of pavement we have, how much uh, linear footage of curbing, things of that nature. And then at the end of the project, we then come forward to an analysis to exactly how much was installed. So the town is only paying for what's installed, you know, good and bad, so to speak. So you put in less tonnage, you pay less, you put in more curbing, you pay more. Um, and then, and, and then um, determine it out from at that point in time. Um, and there we've been very successful again, um, as well as, as maintaining costs and making sure that the price is uh, as low as possible. We try to work on timing of contract and we try to hit, hit when contractors are hungry, things of that nature. We definitely don't go in when, uh, when, they're, when they're full. When their plate is full, you don't ask them to put more on their plate. When they're hungry, looking for you know beginning of the beginning of the year, then you ask them. Uh, I've got two contracts and two bids out right now for paving two separate parking lots, mainly because of the the timing that's involved, and I have to make sure that they're going to be available at the dates that I need them available. So I need them in the contract now because if I ask it later on and they try to fit it in, that's going to cost me more money. There are municipalities that do exactly that, where they ask for a certain time frame, and a certain time frame drives them drives more money. Drives, more, uh, drives the cost of the project down. Um, but we try to stay away from the long and short, we try to stay away from the time and material at all costs and have a you know, either a fixed unit price for that, a uh, fixed cost for that, or a fixed unit, uh, fixed unit, a unit price basis um, sort of uh, to fill in. And I know we're out of, out of time, but it's my first time in this. So when yeah. you submit oh, these, so these requests, Tiger, do you normally yeah. attach um, a importance or a timing factor to these so that town council and board findings and supporters let them know this is what's urgent, this is how long it's going to take, this is what, what can be pushed if necessary? In the budget request, Nick? Were you talking uh, timing and contracts? Is that what you were asking? I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm just saying capital projects. Like I have a list here, right? Of 39 items. Um and I'm just I have no no um no uh, feeling besides what you mentioned earlier, type there about urgency and um any priority. Let the uh, priority. prioritization. Yeah. yeah, we that's a that's a discussion for the first selection of myself as the prioritization. There are certain items that you that we know, you know, have to go depending upon um I'm gonna give you an example. I have to I have to pave West School this year, right? I have to do it in June. I can't do it at any other time. Gotta do it June, July, August. Um I have to we're gonna pave the Banco pool, hopefully if if, uh, if the boards say yes. Um same exact thing. Got to have that done before May 24 because the pool opens on May 31, right? So, um, and then as far as other prioritization goes, that's a, that's a discussion for the first selection of myself as to what items, you know, we should go with the majority of it have their own schedule associated with it. And uh, we don't prioritize, we typically don't prioritize one over the other unless life safety, life, life health safety, number one, ADA compliance, number two, code compliance, number three, and then anything else after that. So we kind of, you know, those are life health and safety are, are paramount for us. So those are, those are first and foremost. Well, you were also talking about with the elevators that we need, obviously there's some revenue coming in from those weddings, like not getting in the way of. Right, so that, that drives the schedule as well, right? I don't want to be in the middle of June and then tell them they can't have any weddings for three months because I'm going to be putting in an elephant, right? That kind of, you know, whereby if I could wait and then actually time it properly and come in, have all the materials there and put it in, much much better idea. So those those schedule, those, I don't call those minor scheduling, but those, those scheduling for the project itself, yeah, I think he was looking at a macro level as to how we prioritize out. Um, as far as where we go, in town, that that comes down to we have a list of, you know, for our roads, we have a list of our our road network and where we where where we are for each road and and, what, and its condition. It's called the pavement condition index for every single road. So we have a pavement condition index for every single road. We know exactly when we're supposed to be at certain milestones on that road as it starts to deteriorate. Because it deteriorates the moment we finish, we fix it. Um, same exact thing for sidewalks. Sidewalks, we try to. 
work some in downtown, some in the outskirts, some in downtown, some in the outskirts. We try to work on some of the work in the downtown area and then work on the neighborhood. So we worked on Field Crescent Village a couple of years ago. Last year, we did Mortimer Brinkhoff and, and Lockwood. Um, we did uh, the Richmond Hill sidewalk um, itself. That was an extension. And next year, if we get the monies, we'll be looking at behind the lot. So we look at trying to attack neighborhoods as we go. Um, and that also comes down to uh, either timing of road work or condition of the uh, of the sidewalk and the network itself. Um, that also drives that schedule or that that uh, that decision making. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, just want to make sure. The uh, so we, do we want to talk about fiscal twenty five now while we're here, or what do we want to do? And I don't know what everybody has for time. We're already in an hour, so I don't know what everybody's got for time. The uh, have another meeting coming in here at four. four. Got another meeting yeah. coming in at four. That's good. So I can take care. I have to jump. Hope you don't have anything, Nick. You don't have anything yeah. to do at work today. Yeah, uh, I, 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 we can do it in the They're already waiting on me something else, but I want to finish this. Do you want, do you want to head on to 25 capital? Uh, yeah, I, I have to jump. If you guys want to continue the conversation, I understand I can get a recap, um, but I, I have to, I can't be a part of it, unfortunately. All right, sorry, Rita. That's and, okay. and, and, and Friday, we're going to talk about operating. We could, well, I, Friday, I, th I thought today was just capital projects itself, and then Friday was the budget itself, but we could do one or the other or both. I don't really, you know, I don't want to limit anybody, but, you know. Well, I, yeah, I'm just saying that maybe we can slide a little bit of, you know, uh, fiscal 25 into the beginning of Friday and then, you know, kind of segue yeah. into the operating budget. That might make some sense. I mean, I could probably push some people around <laughs> that are waiting for me, but I don't. Some of my other colleagues here on the call don't appear to be able to do that. Um, well, we, we could certainly do that on Friday. You know, like I said, if you want to wait and just do it there, I can do the capital first and the operating second. The operating is pretty you know, overall. I'll give you a word. I'm so sorry. I have to jump, but thank you. I'll, okay. I'll get a recap from right. Tina. Right. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Tiger. Thanks, everyone. All right. So you do you want to do that instead? We'll yeah. Just come try it. We'll kind of hit it. Yeah. Hit it all in one shot, and I'll just try not to be as verbose. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But <laughs> just so that everybody knows, it's going to be on Zoom on Friday because town yeah. hall closes at one thirty. So right. We'll just do it on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's what we have to do. And it's three, three o'clock. And, and, and Tiger, just one, one thing you should. <laughs> I'm here, but. Well, I mean, hey, once, once the door is open, it's actually after the happen. discussion this morning, which we'll talk about. Oh, next we'll the discussion. I think, um, yeah. I mean, it's not a problem no, no. to be here yeah. to yeah. record it. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, Hey, Tiger, just like we've done in prior years, if, if you can give some thought as to, you know, if, in reading the room for the larger bodies when you do this presentation, if it looks like the larger town bodies are looking for some savings, you might think about whether or not any one or more of these things could be pushed. I'm not saying, yeah. you know, but there isn't a good and legitimate reason why all these should be this year, right now, et cetera. But, you know, th there is, you know, for completely understandable reasons, people who might be looking like, do we really want to do all this? We want to do all this now. In connection with that, you might think about how you would address a question about bandwidth, right? Do you really have scope and capability? If you got everything on this wish list, do you have the ability to execute? And particularly if you want an engineer is 100% police building all the time, what does that do to your ability to address these other things? And just, you know, obviously, I don't need you to rank these in order of one through 10 priority. But if there, if you can just kind of create a mental list, maybe share with us some of these things that maybe you wouldn't really need or you could push into the next year, then we can kind of take a sense of, you know, as we begin to roll this around a little bit in our bodies, you know, how much room, if any, there might be, or how much scope there might be to kind of push this into a into a later year, if need be. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. See you on Friday. Okay. All right. So, yes. Yeah. And then we, you know, that point time we'll be able to probably roll longer too, later in the day. Whatever. Oh, yeah.
I mean, I was like, I like Friday, really happy. Do you want to end this? Yes. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, that's good. Okay, sorry. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Do you guys do the minutes too? How are you going to do that? Are yeah. you going to have to do the minutes? Uh, Rita will be doing the minutes. Oh, Rita, okay. All right.